So let's start off uh, by giving you a little overview of all of the tools uh, that you might consider useful for microscopy as a hobby. Look at this mess here. A lot of tools and equipment and accessories here. Um, luckily, we do not need all of those. Uh, so I'm going to divide this video into three parts or rather the tools that you might uh, need into three parts. First of all, I'll talk a little bit about the cover glasses and the microscope slides. I think uh, these are the most important um, accessories. Then of course, uh, a few tools here, tweezers and, and, and scissors and pipettes and so on. And last but not least, I have over here um, some, some containers. So how are you going to store your samples? Okay, um, for that I also have a couple of uh, recommendations here. So let's clear up the mess a little bit and let's start um, with uh, the microscope slides and the cover glasses. I think uh, these are the most uh, important ones here. And uh, microscope slides are made of glass, obviously. Um, <laughs> that's uh, very clearly approximately one millimeter thick, um, two and a half centimeters wide and 75 millimeters uh, long. So 25 millimeters by 75 millimeters, um, one inch by three inches approximately. Um, and those microscope slides, they come in uh, different yeah, qualities, um, I would say, um, and also different uh, modifications. So for example, those two here, even though they have uh, pretty much uh, all, almost the same size, uh, actually quite the same size, um, they're a little bit different. Um, look at this one over here here. This one has a, a an edge that um, is, uh, yeah, over here actually polished a little bit. Yeah? And you, if you look here at the corners, you can see that the corners um, are also uh, for, at 45 degrees. Um, so these slides are a little bit of a higher quality compared to the other one over here, which uh, have uh, very sharp corners. And therefore, they are also a little bit cheaper. And uh, because I like to wash my microscope slides after use, um, I recycle them. I therefore prefer to use those here because during the washing process, um, there is simply less risk of my fingers uh, becoming injured. Yeah, but actually, it is a question of, of uh, personal preference. Uh, both of them uh, work um, otherwise equally well. So um, there are slightly more variations uh, concerning the cover glasses, however. Yeah, so let's uh, pick off this here. The cover glasses um, are placed on top of the specimen. Yeah, so um, basically you have the, the microscope slide and you place the specimen on here with a little bit of water and then the cover glass goes on top. And uh, what you can see here already is that the, the cover glasses um, have uh, different sizes. So this one is uh, fairly large. Yeah, look. Yeah, it's pretty large. You can actually see it's a little bit dirty as well. Yeah, unfortunately, some of the slides and cover glasses when they come directly uh, yeah, from out of the package. Sometimes uh, they also need to be cleaned a little bit. Um, I usually do that uh, with uh, yeah, a, uh, yeah, a cloth, a microfiber cloth. Okay, so, um, and uh, yeah, that's a large one. This one over here has an, um, a side length of 18 millimeters. Yeah, um, you see it's also slightly dirty. Um, this one, it has 22 millimeters. It's again, um, it depends very much on um, yeah, on the size of your specimen that you want to use. Otherwise, it uh, really doesn't make a huge difference. But look at those here. Uh, this one over here is uh, is round. Um, they are significantly more expensive. Um, and those round cover glasses are used primarily if you want to make permanently mounted slides. I just want to show you an example here. Yeah, you see over here um, has a round cover glass and it simply looks nicer. That's, uh, but the square ones also work uh, perfectly fine. In this case, uh, it's a locust egg, uh, leg, not egg, leg, yeah? insect, uh, insect leg. Okay, so um, that's basically the uh, uh, yeah uh, choices that you have. E essentially, there are even more um, sizes that you can choose from, but I generally recommend um, that you use those uh, with a, an 18 millimeters because the smaller ones are a little bit more stable than the larger ones. Okay, but again, I would say it really doesn't make a huge difference. Most of the, those cover glasses have a thickness of approximately 0 0.15 to 0 0.17 millimeters. That is the standard size. So yeah, so this is basically, this covers now the slides and the cover glasses. Now let's move on um, to some of the tools uh, that um, I would like to show you as well. So I have to put everything here away. Okay. Okay, let's uh, also put the cover glasses away. And look at this here. This is a pretty, um, yeah, extensive selection of tools. The good news is, is you do not need all of those. Yeah? I simply have over the years accumulated some of them. Um, and I've got a whole assortment of different types of tweezers and, and, and two different kinds of scissors. This is a pipette. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, what do you need? Well, actually, um, I would say maybe in 80 to 90% of the cases, you only need uh, three different tools. I recommend that you get yourself a pointed, um, yeah, a pointed uh, tweezer. Okay. Um, they're quite practical because they can also be used to transfer water. And the second uh, tool I recommend is, is a, a pipette. This one is a disposable plastic pipette, but um, you can also get a microliter pipette. They're, of course, obviously more expensive, yeah? but they look a little bit yeah, more solid, obviously. You can also adjust the volume here, but that's not really important for microscopy in most cases. And the tip here can be also yeah, exchanged by simply pressing um, this button over here and then pew, it starts to fly off. I have to catch it now. Yeah? Kind of, yep, you see it flies off. Um, and it's uh, therefore, um, you can always get a new tip uh, if you work with a new sample. Okay, so this uh, basically pipette, uh, tweezer, and last but not least, I recommend scissors. Um, specifically, the small pointed scissors here are quite, quite useful. Um, so, for example, if you want to observe algae in water, yeah, you can cut the, um, yeah, the algal filaments um, and also small plants using um, this pointed scissor here. And it's also quite useful because sometimes um, I actually also use the scissor here to, to actually manipulate um, a little bit and push the specimens around and pick apart some specimens. You know, so you can see that uh, those tools sometimes have multiple uses um, in, as well. Yeah, all of the others here, yeah, I just basically keep in my, uh, yeah, drawer in case I need them, but in most cases they're not needed. Yeah. So um, where can you get those things? Sometimes there are dissection kits that you can buy online um, Yeah. or otherwise you just basically buy them individually. They're not that expensive. They're made of stainless steel and those tools I already have, well, over 30 years already, I got them when I started to study at university um, as, a, as a dissection as dissection tools and uh, I'm still using them you know, over 30 years ago. So let's move on. The next one is, is I would like to talk a little bit some about some, some specimen containers. Um, there are a couple that uh, I would like to recommend. What we've got here, these are so-called centrifugation tubes. So you can actually use them to centrifuge something, but uh, I think they're very useful as well for storing specimens. Uh, one of the reasons why I like them so much is, is because um, they are also, yeah, tight. Yeah. In this case, it's not water. I've got alcohol in here to keep the specimen um, uh, for a longer time. Yeah, and uh, we can see that uh, they're actually pointed here. Um, otherwise, they're the same, with the exception that uh, down here there is this uh, flat bottom here. So I actually prefer those because you can also yep, you can also stand. Huh? But uh, yeah, if you do not like those, uh, you can also get yourself uh, some other plastic containers. Here I label it now um, pollen. So there are pollen grains in here. Um, also quite useful. Um, it's still possible um, to buy um, old film canisters. Back in the day of analog film, there were these uh, film canisters um, and uh, they are also quite useful um, Yeah, if you're able to get a, a hold <laughs> of them. This here is um, also quite nice. Um, uh, it's a, a small petri dish and what I usually do is, is I put a little bit of water in here. So look, this is a water bottle because I do not have running water in my room. I fill it up and then I basically just squeeze it and uh, I'm able to yeah, up, fill it up uh, with water and then I'm able to use this water. Let me quickly clean it up as well. And then I'm able to use this water to actually make uh, microscope slides. And as I already mentioned before, um, I can of course also use now the, the tweezer itself uh, like this to, to transfer um, to transfer small amounts of water. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, also quite useful to have this. Uh, usually you can also prevent evaporation by simply putting on the lid or sometimes I put into those small petri dishes some specimens, um, some water samples, uh, for example, and then I, I just pick them up from here and uh, I make my microscope slides. Yeah? So that's basically almost everything because I wanted to show you an another last little very practical tool and that is a slide box. Now um, there are all sorts of slide boxes available online, plastic and wood, expensive and cheap. This one I made myself. Okay, um, that's why I added also a, lo a logo over here um, as well. Um, yeah, simply uh, um, out of uh, personal interest, I, I used my laser cutter to make uh, those slide boxes as well. But I do recommend that you get yourself also a few of those, uh, provided that you're interested in actually making um, permanently mounted slides. Okay, not everyone's interested in making those, and in this case, you do not need them. But uh, 
I wanted to show you here as well another use of those round cover glasses. Look, this is a sand slide. In this case, um, I've used my round cover glass here, but I also added some, some spacer rings here as well so that uh, it is able to contain the sand. The sand is, of course, uh, here labeled. <laughs> it's from Dubai. Okay, so yeah, um, I basically just wanted to uh, give you a short overview of uh, the different uh, you know, tools that you you can use here. Um, but uh, yeah, look look at those tweezers here. Uh, they are actually used before I finished uh, to actually hold uh, yeah the, those uh, cover glasses as well. But uh, I rarely use those. Yeah, okay, I think uh, you get the point, you get the idea. Um, I wanted to just give you a short overview of what is available um, out there. I'm going to leave it at that. I wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. And of course, uh, the next video um, will be about making a wet mount. See you around.